Yeah. Right. Final bit of news, Ben. What, what's what's this one? I think I think this is the one I like. Cool. Yeah. So the final bit of news comes out of Games Workshop. Now there was a lot of stuff that happened over last weekend. One of the big things was Blackstone Fortress, but as well as that, they had the Blood and Glory event. And at the Blood and Glory event, they also announced a couple of new things as well. So for Age of Sigmar, they announced that they're going to be doing a Realm of Chaos box, which is called Wrath and uh, Rapture. And it sees two of the classic sort of enemies of the Chaos factions, Khorne and Slaanesh, heading off against each other in a new plastic box set. Mm -hmm. Uh, This means that we're also going to be seeing some new miniatures as well. So you get some new plastic flesh hounds and you also get the new plastic fiends of Slaanesh. And the thing that was really interesting about this is that one of the big things that happened early with uh, the idea of uh, Age of Sigma was that sort of Slash was kind of pushed to the back Mm. because it was a little bit too adult, I suppose, for a lot of people to start (laughs) to try and make a game. A a little bit, you say? A little bit? Yeah. And now suddenly the big big slabbering tongue monster with lots of, um, let's just say, chest on uh, on show here he's suddenly back at the four so it'll be really interesting to see what the reception is to this because um, obviously a lot of people were missing Slanesh, but then a lot of people were quite happy that she had she he they had gone um but yeah a really cool little uh, plastic set that's coming out for this so if you want to get yourself stuck into some demon armies you've got some choices there which is really cool mm. yeah. well i i did kind of like the way they they handled Slanesh whenever they they retired it for a time in the actual backstory was that Slanesh was so sated from actually devouring elvish souls Pretty much, yeah. Be captured. That was a nice touch for me. I, I just assumed that they were going to uh, just going to retire it completely. So yeah, had I. So had I. It just, like I say, it was a bit too adult. Yeah. Uh, and I think the new kitty friendly GW was just going to move away from that altogether. Well, I, I do remember stories of fellas who would go to tournaments with Slaneshi 40k stuff. And if they were playing anyone under 18, they actually had to put like the Land Raider and stuff inside a cardboard box to put it on the table. You are kidding me. I kid you not. I would have asked for my money back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, an in, it's an interesting one because mm-hmm. uh, obviously there's a, lot, there's a lot of lore and stuff sort of building into the background of this and they've kind of sort of done it in an interesting way. Um, one of the big things, obviously, was that, as you were saying, Jerry, they kind of looked like they were phasing it out and bringing the Horned Rat to be like the other Chaos Gods because mm-hmm. obviously the Horned Rat is another one of the Chaos Gods but not in so much like a Prime Meridian sort of file that, uh, mm-hmm. style that you get uh, with Slanesh. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it and hopefully they do more Realm of Chaos boxes too. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see sort of Zench and Nurgle and all that kind of thing being thrown into the mix too. So yeah. mm-hmm. Now, what else do we have in this story? So, yeah, so the other news that came out of it, just quickly for Age of Sigma is that the next battle tome is going to be uh, Destruction. So if you're a big fan of Grotz, hopefully that's going to be a big thing. So we're going to get a, bit, a little bit of Bad Moon Rising out there. Hopefully mm-hmm. someone plays some cool music in the background there, but they, they won't. <laughs> uh, and then following on from that, we have some cool stuff uh, from Necromunda with House Delicu uh, being sort of added into the mix for anyone who likes to get stuck into stuff happening down in the Underhive. Mm-hmm. I know that uh, Chris Handley is a, a big fan. Uh, Dark, the guy from Darker Days Radio is a big fan of Necromunda and loves his war bands and, and his, uh, his crews. So Hopefully he's going to be picking up some House Delicue and painting them up. Mm. They all look fantastic. And as always, they're in stylish trench coats because you couldn't be Delicue without an amazing trench coat. And they are looking very cool indeed. So. I, am, I am digging <laughs> the sinister look to these guys. I love the one in the centre that's just pointing and going, Oh, you, grenade. So a few of them look like they almost <laughs> have hair. Almost. I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> they're all genetically as bald as coots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing, interesting thing I thought actually about um, House Delicue as well is that w- a lot of the stuff from Necromunda is very, very intricate and detailed, which is absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. But these miniatures could actually be a very good starting house for someone to play as because the actual painting them is um, quite simple. Mm-hmm. All you've got to do is paint the trench coats and then sort of fill in those details and suddenly you've got a really nice looking model. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit of shading and highlighting and you've got uh, a very good looking war bandit very, very quickly. So Yeah, yeah. possibly. Possibly it's an option. What do you think, Jerry? Yeah. I, I know you paint at glacial speed. I, I, I can be <laughs> terrible when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those things. It's a lot easier than something like the Goliaths where you've got a ton of flesh on mm. show, certainly. See, I used to absolutely hate painting skin tones until I discovered, very simple, you block colour down, get a wash on it, and just touch it up, leave it be. Nah, that doesn't work. It works for me. Yeah, see, it doesn't work for me. That, that's why it would take so long. <laughs> I know. I know. But everybody has their own level yeah. of painting. And if you're just starting out, the way I say it is, block it, wash it, tidy it, leave it. 
it, it, I think it's certainly come on a lot, a lot more steps now recently because the Games Workshop obviously did a lot more of their research into their paint range and they've got the kind of base colours down now. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time when you were painting with a flesh tone, it maybe took a couple of different layers to get it right, yeah. especially on a, a, an undercoated black miniature. Uh, but if you're going never for undercoat paint, black, never undercoat black. I I undercoat white now because oh, it's so much easier. I but, undercoat uh, in flesh tone. <laughs> Problem solved. And that is that is also a way to do it, definitely. So, but uh, but yeah, because they've got these base colours out there now, it's a lot easier to get uh, painting done, yeah. especially with the Citadel range. But yeah, 